29 Stetson made the hike up to Davidson, North Carolina for its first of two back-to-back -back conference road trips to the Tar Heel State. Time to get the hammer out, boys. The Hatters, well, they're known to be a force on the road. Here having the opportunity to act as spoiler at the Wildcats homecoming. Hi there, I'm Despina Barn. I want to thank you so much for joining us for the sixth edition of the Roger Hughes Show. We got a jam back show for you today. Coach Hughes will join me on hand to break down that Davidson game later. But first, let's go ahead and show you how everything went down as the boys traveled up to North Carolina. The home Wildcats win the coin toss, so Hatters have the ball first. Cole Mazza opens up this conference contest with some major yardage. Treks 49 yards to put in his Hatters on the Davidson 21. A fast and furious start would fizzle out as Ryan Tenler gets stopped at the one on fourth down. We'd see them again soon, but not before the Wildcats work their way into field goal range. Send over Trevor Smith out for a 27-yard strike. The home team goes up 3 to nothing. Stetson D doing work. Sophomore Dave Lazier breaking up this play to force Davidson to punt away. A minute 50 left in the first quarter. Hatters pick up the ball on their own 32. Ryan Tenler says, hey, I got this. Passes out to Keegan Moore for a beautiful 23-yard completion. Then the running game goes on display right here with Cole Mazza. The 221-pound running back from Ponta Vedra Beach takes it all the way in from 45 yards out. Hashtag beast mode right there. Grant Amick solid with the PAT and the Hatters go up 7-3. Now Stetson kicks off Wildcats. Cam Chevron with the return. Brings the ball all the way up to midfield then is met with a fiery Jonathan Strahl. Forces the fumble and Dave Lazier there to recover it. A mishandle by Davidson pays dividends for the Hatters. With three ticks left in the first quarter, Hatters go into their bag of trickery. They fake the punt. Rob Coggins, who's listed as a receiver, drops back, sends the ball over to Marlon Hall, makes a 52 yard completion for a touchdown. What a way to close out the first quarter for Stetson. They extend the lead to 14 3. Now we saw the Wildcats fight back in the second quarter. They capitalized on the Hatters' multiple penalties and miscues, rattling in two scores before the defense said no more. Davian Belk had his target on freshman quarterback Taylor Mitchell. Ball still was released and Chris Atkins was there to make the interception. That's his fifth on the year. Hatters convert on this turnover through the trenches. Mazza from the four yard line notches his second TD of the game and has already registered 117 rushing yards thus far. The men in green would head into the half, though down 24-20. Out to the third we go. Davidson's Mitchell throws into trouble. Ryan Powers, a defensive leader on the team, gets the pick and heads downfield, putting Stetson in the red zone. Time to zone in now. Tentler to Chris Crawford on the slant. It's a touchdown, Hatters. Seven minutes later, Stetson moving downfield again. Tentler gets the ball over to Darius McGriff for a 31-yard completion that keeps the chains moving. Quarterback keep situation right here lands Tentler on the one. The Hatters put a bow on a nine play 64 yard series with a short pass into Jonathan Stahl. The tight end from Port Orange earned six. It's 33-31 Stetson. Hatters not done this quarter. Ryan Powers has something brewing as he makes his second pick of the day. The defensive back from Jupiter returns it to the Davidson 31. Clock is winding down. Time for one more play. Tentler hits Chris Crawford for a 22 yard strike to set up his team on first and goal at the start of the fourth quarter. From the one, Cole Mazza, the people's champ, punches it in for his third touchdown of the game. Scoreboard reads 40-31. The Wildcats not going away just yet, trying to make a final push late in the fourth. Taylor Mitchell gets the ball out to Nick Wheeler for a quick 36-yard game, but the Hatters' defense keeps them out of the end zone. Instead, Davidson settles for a field goal. 37 seconds to go, here comes the onside kick, and just like that, the Payne train seals up the game. Donald Payne recovers the ball and ends the Wildcats' hopes of a comeback. Hatters play the role of spoiler at Davidson's homecoming to get their first Pioneer Conference win. Final score, 40-34. Good job with the first road win, <coughs> all right? First road conference win, yeah. all right? Number two, we found a way to fight the officials, to fight the adversity, overcome poor play in the first half to win in the third and fourth quarter, which is awesome. That's the makings of a championship team. That's what our program wants to be known for. Now, with that said, our opponents get better as we go through this. We can't afford to make the same mistakes that we did today later on. But hell, enjoy it. Get yourself healed up. Come back and look at this film critically. Okay. Stay right where you are because when we return from commercial, we'll have Coach Hughes on hand to break down that Davidson game. Then we'll have a look at our October Student Athlete of the Month, Donald Payne. It's all happening right here on The Roger Hughes Show.
in to the Roger Hughes Show. We're inside the Hatters Training Center. Coach Hughes by my side. You return with a victory on the road against Davidson. The final score was 40-34. Coach, did it feel like a home game out there? Because there were just as many Sesson fans as there were Davidson fans. Well, it does, and, and what we're finding, even though we're a very young program, our, our fans, our parents, and certainly the alumni in the area are really traveling very well. And uh, I don't know, it sure seems like they're, they're uh, maybe because after 57 years of not cheering for anybody, they have a lot pent up inside them. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, they were very loud. We definitely noticed them, uh, noticed them coming out. Uh, during the game, I don't really as much, but, uh, but both here and at San Diego, it was a great showing. And I know our kids feed off of that as well. Also something that your kids feed off of. I saw the hammer pregame. I've never seen that before. Tell mm -hmm. me more about what the kids have, you know, introduced into their pregame rituals. Well, it, it actually is a recent tradition. And the neat thing about starting a program is you get to make your own traditions. And uh, what I've started to do is have each assistant coach, a different coach, speak to the team Friday night about what it takes to win. And I think it's a great way for kids to hear the same thing, but maybe in a different way. And it just so happened that Matt Diniak, the uh, Friday before the Jacksonville game, uh, brought in the notion of the hammer and he wanted to award it uh, to the person, maybe not the best player, but certainly the person who's a warrior, the person who exemplifies what we want to be as a Stetson player and uh, and someone who you want in your foxhole, so to speak. And so he awarded that to Pat Fogarty. Uh, Pat then uh, awarded it to Jason Willix uh, on Friday before the Davidson game and then Jason took the tradition to a next level, brought the hammer out with us and then we all got together and he pounded the hammer into the turf and uh, kind of got us going. So uh, so that's kind of the new tradition. It seems to keep growing as each time uh, a new recipient uh, gets to put their kind of kind of spin on it. Yeah, certainly the en energy flowed right over to the game because you guys started really fast, really furious. Cole Mazza running just about anywhere you wanted to go, right, in that first quarter? Well, he had two very big runs early. You know, he had a 49-yarder to start it off, I believe, and then, uh, and then we got down there. He had another 17-yard run after that. Uh, the unfortunate thing was we did not score when we were in the red zone and, and, and actually inside the three and, and that's I take the responsibility for that. We we did not see any goal line plays on film so we were kind of speculating as to what they would do. Um, we guessed wrong and and so I could have had the team better prepared had had uh, I known what we were what we were going to see probably would have done something different and again I think our, our offensive coaches uh, we made some great adjustments because the next times we were down there, we didn't walk away without points. That's for sure. You went four from five from the red zone from there on out. Um, Coach, that second quarter was kind of, you talk about those um, hills and dips. It was kind of a low time, but the team came back from the, uh, in the third and kind of stepped it back up. Mm -hmm. What was that halftime experience like? Well, basically, um, I got them in the, to the locker room because really we had allowed Davidson, I thought, to, to stay in the game. I thought mistakes we were making. I didn't think that... I didn't think they were beating us, I thought we were beating ourselves. And so basically I just kind of told the team, listen fellas, uh, if I'm you, I walk over to their, to their locker room and just say, is that all you got? Because really they've hit us with every shot they have and they haven't been able to take us out. So if we just turn around and start playing our game and start doing things like we're coached to do, we're going to be fine. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't really think it was the opportunity to, to really jump on them. I just thought maybe just kind of settle them down. The game was still well within, within reach. and, and uh, and I thought just a couple miscues and, and really, really stupid penalties had put us in a position where uh, the game was probably closer than we wanted to have it. Yes, the guys came out on the defensive end forcing, what was it, five turnovers? Something that, you know, was key to your success. What kind of um, momentum did that set with Donald Payne and all these guys making these interceptions? It was uh, Chris Atkins, Ryan Powers, it almost seemed like a true team effort for those 60 minutes. Well, the back end of our defense tends to tends to create a lot of plays, and uh, and while we weren't getting a great pass rush, what we were doing, we were staying in coverage very well. And as you said, Chris Atkins had an interception, uh, Donald Payne had one, Ryan Powers had two interceptions, and, and some of their interceptions were key in the fact they gave us very short fields, especially to start of the third quarter. We started uh, deep in their territory and were able to cash in on points for that. And so, um, you know, while, while um, turnovers were the key, um, you know, nice thing we were able to take advantage of those turnovers, which we weren't able to do other games. And so I'm hoping that's a sign of maturity, and I'm hoping that's a sign of uh, experience kicking in, of, of, you know, being able to take advantage of the opportunities we're presented, and, and certainly our defense created those this week. Obviously a big conference win for you guys, a boost on the road, better on the road to all three victories this year on the road. What do you what do you say about your team and their performance jumping on a bus for 12 hours and being A-OK -okay to play? Well, maybe we should jump on a bus for 12 hours on Friday if we play at home, and maybe that'll help us. I don't know. We've, we've won on the road, and we've also won on 
on field turf uh, surface. We have one on grass on the road. So um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but, but certainly um, it was very gratifying to get the first conference win on the road. Uh, we had not done that yet. And so again, as we mature as a program, we're starting to achieve those firsts that hopefully become uh, repeat, um, especially this week when we go up to see Campbell. A quote you had in your post game yesterday to the guys was, you can't win the last five without winning the first one. And we just did that. How did that feel at that moment? To well, I mean, obviously uh, winning cures a lot of things. And while I was very pleased with the win, I was really pleased with how we came out and played in the third and fourth quarter. Because I thought uh, there were a couple of times in those quarters that we could have kind of laid down a little bit. And, and we didn't. We stayed. We kept plugging away. And, and so while I felt very uh, excited, uh, I, the, the term I like to use, I was happy, not satisfied. I still think we can play a lot better. I still think we made some mental mistakes, both with penalties and, and turning the ball over that we shouldn't have, that we can play better. But with that said, to go on the road, um, uh, especially that long road trip, and to come back with the first conference win against a Davidson team that had been improving all year long was very gratifying. Feels good, I know. It was a 40-34 victory on the road at Davidson, Coach. We're going to have to break for commercial right now, but when we return, we'll have an in-depth look at our student athlete of the month. It's Donald Payne. You know him very closely, Coach. So stay right with us here on The Roger Hughes Show. into the Ryder Hughes show beside me head coach Ryder Hughes I'm Despina Barn we're gonna get right to this coach guy you're very familiar with he's being honored as the October student athlete of the month Donald Payne go ahead and check this out oh, I'm very very excited about it. I'm glad about the recognition um, I'm really just great that um, I recognize for my academics also as my football um, football accolades um, I mean it's great I mean I've had support from the coaches from the professors the community and so um, it's a great, uh, it's a great honor, really, and I'm that I'd be a part of Stetson. Yeah. Um, that I'm able to um, like take my academics and athletics and try to excel in both of them. Really, I mean that's a that's a big deal. My mom's very proud of that. Um, and also the, the Stetson atmosphere has helped support me and the Stetson student athlete, the body, really, and the coaching staff. And so I'm glad they're keeping me on this right path right now. I would definitely have to say managerial accounting. Uh, I like numbers, but not that many numbers. Accounting is pretty hard. Uh, everybody knows accounting with Miss Bonnie Holloway, everybody knows, is probably the hardest course here in the business program. Um, the workload, definitely, is, is pretty heavy. And then um, she makes sure her exams are, are hard, basically. Preparation is everything, really. Um, preparation preparation like in, the, in your studies, if you study for your exam hard, you probably will get a better grade. And with football, like, hard work and dedication and always in every, in every aspect if you want to be good at something you got a hard work and de dedication you have to do more than what the average person does if you want to excel in it. Wanting to be successful really um, my dad just still that instilled that into me at a very young age um, if you want to be successful you have to work your hardest in all you do and my mom to this day instills that into me and I mean I want to be good in the classroom just as much as I want to be good on the football field like I want to be in the top of my class in the classroom and I want to be one of the top players in the football field at the same time and so um, if you have that motivation to be successful like you can do a lot of things. My mom loved it and that was one of the reasons but one of the main reasons I always tell everybody is I mean it was a whole freshman class coming in so I had a chance to start from the very beginning and I had a chance to take on a leadership role at the very beginning and also I mean they call this Harvard of the South Stetson and so I was getting good academics also getting a chance to play at a very young age and so I was able to come out here and start my freshman year coming into my sophomore season and also doing well in the classroom and so 
Stetson is really just, I mean, two birds with one stone. I got, I get to play football and I get to have a good education. I mean, he was actually very important. Uh, he was actually my recruiting coordinator. He came up to the school two or three times, gave me a call about once a month. Um, I started, started kind of late in the recruiting period, but I mean, it, Stetson kept growing on me and um, I came up on a visit. My mom loved it. Um, my, my little brother loved it. Uh, and I think it just, it just felt like home. Well, when I walk onto the field, my goal, I, I tell coach all the time, like, I want to be known as a playmaker, but I want to play our scheme. Like, if I don't make the play that play, I'm fine with that. But with my mind on the field is I need to play, make a play for my team to, to help us win. And so I go on the field, I make sure I do my job. But if I see the ball given, I'm, I'm hustling to the ball all the time, giving constant effort. And my goal is to, every time I'm on the field, make a play that can help us win. And if that's me not making a tackle, that's okay. But I just know I, I want to get to the ball, make a play for my teammates, and celebrate with my teammates. Discipline. Not discipline off the field, but discipline while I'm on the field. Just making sure I stay in the right gap, make sure I do, do the right call, make sure I know, I know the call. And I just, I just think I've, that, I've gotten better since freshman year, and so I think I just can keep improving on it. And I know by, by next year, I'll be, I'll be pretty good at it. Probably say instincts. Instincts. Coach Young always says I have uh, pretty good instincts, and so I try to I rely on them a little bit too much. So that's where the discipline comes into play. But my instincts really take me to the ball, and that's why I would think I'm around the ball so much. Well, I'm a, a major in finance, and so hopefully one day I'm gonna I'm finish my degree here, and hopefully I get my MBA later on down the line. And I'll try to be a financial manager at a, at a big corporation one day, and um, just use my um, I love numbers, so I can uh, I can deal with numbers for the rest of my life. I mean, it's very important, and um, I'm kind of disappointed this this, um, this this past year, this year going on right now, we haven't been able to get a win at home yet, and all those people come out to the games and support us and donate. We're trying to put on a good show for them. We want to let Stetson know that um, that we are a dedicated program. We, we're here to get wins. We're here to show the community that we really care, and so I'm kind of disappointed we haven't got those wins yet, but I'm pretty sure down on the line, down this year, we'll get some wins at home. Oh, I definitely will give back. I'll, I know I'll come back for homecoming. Uh, all these brothers I've created on this team so far, like, I just know I, I've had friends for life now, right now. And um, I know I can give back because Stetson has, has done so much for me and my family. Um, and I still have two more years left, so I'm about to make most of it. Keep on coming out. <laughs> We're going to put a, sh put a show on for you. Um, we love you. Um, uh, all the support you give us actually keeps us motivated, not just the, your, your motivation helps us get, get through and knowing that people have our backs, even in, in tough times and losses and in adversity, we just know you have our back. That's uh, great to know. Coach, quite an impressive young man that you have on your team there in Donald Payne, the student athlete of the month. He's already gotten recognition in the two PFL Defensive Player of the Week awards. He's got national recognition. How proud are you of this guy and that he's in your program? Well, I'm certainly glad he's in our program simply because I would not want to play against him, that's for sure. But uh, but as as great as his accolades are, and he's deserving of all of them, some of the numbers he generates is just are just remarkable. Uh, what I'm most proud of is how he's developing as a young man. Um, you know, Donald, as a freshman, when all these accolades are thrown on you, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on, on kids to, to meet expectations. Uh, I know last year on the field, he, I know he felt like he had to make every play. He knows he doesn't have to, he's playing within the defense better, but more importantly, his, he's keeping up his academics. Um, he's, I've heard from his professors, he's doing a great job of contributing in the classroom. And so while we're really proud of what he does on the field, we're equally as proud and, and have the same expectations that he performs that way off the field as he becomes a young man. Yeah, he shared with us a 3.75 GPA and a finance major. He's got a straight head on him. Coach, he also mentioned that you were part of his recruiting. You were actually his recruiting coordinator. Mm -hmm. So you met him two years ago. What were your first impressions of him, and how has he grown since that time? Well, the first time I met him in his school, I didn't know how interested he really was. And I tried to explain to him we're starting our own program, uh, has a great opportunity to come in and make a difference, make a tradition. And, and those types of things. And then really didn't hear a whole lot from him. And, and we hired Brian Young later in the process. Uh, Brian kind of reached back out to Donald, got him down on a visit, and it was a late visit. You know, signing day is generally around f uh, the first weekend in February. Uh, we didn't get him on campus till really late March, early April. So he was a late signee and, and you know, the rest is history. The rest is history. Coach, stay right where you are because when we return here on the Roger Hughes Show, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that Campbell game where you and your team trek back up to North Carolina. It's all happening right here on The Roger Hughes Show.
Roger Hughes Show. Coach, it's time to look ahead. You guys are going back on the road, back up to North Carolina, this time meeting Campbell. Do you think your guys are getting used to this kind of road routine? Well, they must be because we play pretty well on the road, that's for sure, and, and hopefully they'll carry it over with that. Um, you know, Campbell's had two come from behind wins, and one they almost came from behind last week, so we're going to have our hands full in that. we got to make sure that we keep them down all the way. We've got to play a great uh, second half because they are definitely a second half team. What do you remember from them that you can instill this year with this same group of guys as far as preparation? Well, they're big. They're big and physical up front. Uh, their their uh, secondary runs very well. Offensively, they've been using a couple different quarterbacks. They did that in the Davidson game a couple weeks ago, and so uh, both guys can throw. Both guys have uh, good mobility, and and they've really established a pretty good running game. And so all those things. Uh, the basic philosophical things, we've got to make them one-dimensional on offense. We can't turn the ball over. Offensively, we do have to run the ball effectively to, to have a chance. But it's going to be a great opportunity to go up there. The facility looks great. I know that they have a new coach in Mike Minter, who's from Nebraska, played at Nebraska, so we have kind of a tie there. And he, like us, are in the process of building the program. And so I think a lot of the growing pains that we are going through, they're going through as well. And, and so it's really two teams that are kind of on a similar path. Um, They've had a little earlier success than we have within the conference, us getting our first conference win. And so uh, we need to keep our momentum going as we go forward. I would say, what is that momentum like and that confidence like in the locker room? I know you said that in that post-game speech, that this is this is only one game. You handle it one week at a time, mm -hmm. but these are big games, big conference games. Well, yeah, and I think the next step for our program is to be able to put back-to-back -back wins together. We haven't done that to this point. And, and, and a lot of times when you're building a program, how you handle success is as important as how you handle failure. And uh, so we can't get to feeling too good about ourselves. We have a very physical, uh, very well-coached opponent coming up. Uh, we look to, you know, we look to correct the mistakes we made last week, put the new wrinkles in both offensively and defensively, and, and try to again try to come up with the same formula on the road. Um, again, the long trip has taken it out of us a little bit. Well, it'll be see, it'll be interesting to see how we bounce back. But uh, so far, the guys have handled it well this week. Coach, you said in that post-game address to your team that you know. Uh, this is the makings of a championship team. You have won one, but you still have four more conference games on your table. How does this thing go for you guys? Well, the, the whole thing is we got to focus on the now, and we got to focus on Campbell. Campbell's a very formidable opponent. Uh, we're going to have our hands full with all of these games coming up, but our focus has been primarily on Campbell. Um, and, and we can't really look forward. And I think uh, with it, when, when you're coaching a young team, it's real easy, and especially with this generation, they tend to project where they want to be without understanding the steps it takes to get there. You know, as I said yesterday, we've got to clean up a lot of the mistakes we made. We can't make stupid penalties, and by stupid, by my, not thinking from the standpoint, we've got to understand we're on the road so that we're not going to get the calls uh, a lot of times with the officials, or we're certainly not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And most importantly, we've got to win the explosive play battle, and we've got to win the turnover battle. And, uh, and that's kind of what we're focusing on this week. Uh, everything is directed toward, toward the camels, so to speak, and, and, uh, and we're not looking beyond that. With that said, you do have to have goals. And certainly, um, I try to make sure I mix where we need to be going with what we need to focus on right now. And hopefully, we can develop that mentality where we can set a long-term goal but understand the steps that we got to go through to get there. And and if you're building a championship team, it's a series of good decisions every day. And it gets it gets up with, I'm going to have a great practice today. I'm going to have a great meeting today. And then if you do that, then the next day you do the same thing. And if you do those kinds of things along the process, um, generally you have a good result at the end of the week. And all the guys are buying it. Well, right now they are. A win does a great job of selling it for you. Um, you know, the, the thing I admire about these guys is they, they have bought it, they believe it, they continue to do it, even though we haven't seen the success on the wind column. But they have seen the success in how we're playing our games. Our games are much closer than they were last year. Um, our games are much more physical last year, and we're playing more complete games. In other words, we're not, uh, you know, last week against Davidson, we had a great second half, and that's something we hadn't done in a long time. So, again, I think it's all the steps are going the right direction. We just got to continue to make sure that we understand we have to bring a hard hat and lunch pail every practice to, uh, to get ready to go. Coach, a close victory on the road at Davidson. You're getting ready to go back up to North Carolina this week to Campbell. And then I like to look ahead to homecoming November 8th. It's home. It's a 3 o'clock kickoff against Maris. If you don't have your tickets, go to www.gohatters.com. You can find all the information right there. Coach, it's a wrap for us. So for head coach Roger Hughes, I'm Justina Byrne. We want to thank you so much for watching the Roger Hughes Show.